Hello, welcome to your 2018 New Year of the Dog Predictions. If you want to get straight to your reading, feel free to skip past this intro. So as an update, I haven't posted to my channel for the past couple of months because I moved over the holidays and I took January to unpack and comfortably settle into my new place. I am excited to say that I'm now able to begin posting monthly forecast videos again. So this month of February has already been a very active month. I'm filming these videos on the day of the Chinese New Year ushered in today on February 16th, which really comes at an advantageous time of change this year. This is because directly following Valentine's Day, we had the new moon solar eclipse in Aquarius on the 15th. We had already experienced the full moon lunar eclipse on January 31st. Eclipses happen twice a year and they come in pairs two weeks apart. They tend to bring shifts in our life circumstances, which is a necessary function in order to grow and move forward. Sometimes these changes can be interpreted as being sudden or unexpected. However, really most likely they are the result of a longer term sort of underlying energy that has come to a culminating point of manifestation. And that is brought out at this time of the eclipses. So in this reading, we will be looking at the tarot to show the energetic focal point of the solar eclipse for your sign after the yearly predictions. So 2018 is the year of the earth dog. Earth has qualities of being effectively communicative, serious, and responsible in work. And the dog makes a loyal companion to friends, family, colleagues, and lovers. Overall this year, we will experience themes of trust in our associations, as well as the ability to draw in true friends and reliable partners. Dog energy gives honesty and fair actions. It can bring popularity in social circles. It lends advice and help to others and can fix bad habits or bad associations. For these video forecasts, I want to draw cards for the entirety of the new year, separate from the more immediate concentrated energy of the solar eclipse. So I will be doing these readings in two parts, each with a different focus. These, of course, are general readings based upon either your sun, moon, or ascendant. So if you would like a personalized reading, please contact me through my website, sungoddessashley.com. Okay, so let's get started with your readings. Capricorn, let's see what the year of the dog has in store for you. So for this video, I'm using the Connolly Tarot, and I'm also going to be drawing from the medicine cards and the secret language of color cards. So I want to focus in on the new year of the dog. I'm going to be pulling 12 cards, one for each month of the year for you Capricorn, even though we've already done, we've already gone through January and we're halfway through February. I did want to include them just to get an overall picture. Okay what this year is going to look like and see how things flow for a Capricorn. There we go. One, two, three, four, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Queen of Pentacles, this must be you. Queen of Pentacles can be any earth sign. She can be Virgo or um, Capricorn, although I do see the Queen's is fixed. Um, so, um, but it looks like you know, the Queen of Pentacles is, is representing you. Um, yeah, and it's all about your gains, what you've achieved, what you acquire this year, looking at material things. She's very materialistic. 
not in a bad way. She uses her resources to better her life so that she can be a better person to help other people. Um, she's actually very generous with her things. She has a sense of pride and ownership for earning what she works hard for. But then when she gets the status or the amount of things she wants, she also is able to share them with other people and elevate other people as well. So she lifts, lifts people up. That's sort of the energy that I'm seeing for you is it's what's, um, it's going to be a, a year that's going to have pleasure. There's also going to be some pain in there because, because without one, you wouldn't know the other. Okay. So I see a little bit of that here and here. Um, but mostly it's going to be, it's going to be good. It's going to be uh, pleasurable. Some things are uncomfortable though. Um, I'm going to start here with January. I'm going to guess that for a lot of the Capricorn people, um, something ended. I'm hearing bitter end. And I think you fought until the better end. But it's just like, you know what, that energy just needed to go. It's some sort of ending. It's some sort of death in your life. And um, uh, I'm seeing this card has come up a lot for people. It's the Eight of Pentacles, which is about work. And it's not just like your work, but it's like also putting your skills to work. Something that you are good at that you're doing. But it's like you already know what you're good at. You already know, you know, what you like to do, what you want to do. Um, it feels a little dry. That's what I'm seeing. The year starts out like a little bit dry and uninspired. It's just sort of like, okay, you know, too much work, not enough play. That's what I'm seeing with this card. I do get the sense of security that hard work comes through. You have the security, you have the family. I have like providing for yourself and other people. You have a sense of responsibility in order to, to, pri to provide for other people. And that's where your self-esteem really comes from how well can I take care of myself can I can I support myself can I support other people not just monetarily although a lot of it has to do with that but also emotionally morally um, in in that way you are needed you have a sense of purpose that you're fulfilling I'm seeing that come in here for you for February and March the chariot Maybe actually some of you actually make it a new car. That's why I don't quite always take the chariot as being literal. It is a vehicle of, um, it can be a metaphorical vehicle of transportation or success. It's what helps you get what you want in life. Um, and it makes mobility easier. And also it helps you achieve and sort of conquer your goals. It all has that element to it. But I'm also seeing for some of you, there is a more specific prediction of actually looking at getting a new car. You have the money to do it. Maybe you've saved up the money um, or some sort of new transportation, either for you or your partner. The transportation theme is coming up for you for April. So may I have new love. This is where things felt a little bit dry and it's just all work. This is where something actually really beautiful comes in. It's not just fun, but it actually feels really good. Um, it feels nourishing. It feels healing to you. Um, it's opening up a new door of like romance, love and romance for you. Okay. I like that. The high priestess is actually soaking and like basking in this sort of fertile energy. Um, I say basking because you're not really giving it away. You're sort of just owning it. It's sort of washing over you, regenerating. Um, but in that it's growing stronger. You have like these hopes and aspirations that come up in, in uh, July. feels very hopeful. Higher aspirations for yourself goals again um there's something that i'm also getting with the moon and the star here something about timing and cycles that's going to bring something about for you something that you want hasn't come yet i see you having it by the end of the year for some of you, it may be even the following year, but it's like what you want 
this lofty goal that you have, maybe to start like a nonprofit organization or something like that, that it's, it's humanitarian, helps other people. I see it coming in down the line, you know, from here and then the following years. Okay, so something very specific sort of comes in and it feels like it disrupts this flow of energy. It's like, okay, back down, you know, pulling you out from the higher ideals from the stars back down to reality. You have some sort of shocking jolt back into reality. Um, I see two very strongly opinionated people sort of going at it. This is you and somebody else. I do feel like opinions do clash. It ends up becoming a verbal, um, just like it's not something you intended to get into an argument with this person, but it feels like a clash of the wills. And it's like a one-upping sort of energy. Okay. Um, okay. I'm also seeing an interesting thing here. Even though you have this, it's like you're still sticking to your morals, your ethics, your principles. It's like code, moral code. I see this as being like HR or something or some sort of like humanitarian sort of structure. It could even be a group. I it Honestly, it's usually like a school um, or a church or some sort of institution that has very traditional roots. Okay, so there could be involvement in that in some way, shape, form. Maybe you're going to be going to church or something like that. It feels, it kind of feels that sense. So some sort of like group of people and then you end up, you end up meeting somebody from that. There's like a romance here. Some of you may be, may be thinking about getting married as well. This is, can be a marriage card and this is the relationship. Um, I do get that there's something that follows this though. This doesn't exactly indicate like a smooth start to a marriage. Five of um, cups is usually about disappointments. We all have disappointments in our relationships. There's not one single person that's not going to disappoint us. Um, but that doesn't mean that we have to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Um, it does look like there's some immediate disappointment within this relationship. You're like, oh, it sort of falls short of my expectations. But I feel like as being a realistic sign, you do understand people's limitations. You do understand fundamentally human limitation. There's something that's going to be reminding you of that here and like your ability to just go, okay, let's work with this. Be, be practical here. You know, now how can we... How can we work to move forward? You know, Emperor is about taking responsibility for your actions as well. You may even end up taking responsibility for their actions and just being the bigger person. Okay, so this is kind of what I'm seeing. It's interesting you have the two cups here that they're each holding, which is love. It comes after the Ace of Cups. Here it's on the shelf. So it's like even though you have the love that's maybe there's a new person coming into your life. And it starts to get serious and then there's some sort of disappointment. Um, it does look like you're just putting the love on the back burner. You're putting it on the shelf. You're going to come back to it later. It does hasn't spoiled the whole relationship, but there's some disappointment that you have. It could be from this. Okay, again, it's two strong-willed people, two very opinionated people. And there's a clash here. Um, what's interesting is that I see two tens. I, t I see two fives, actually three fives with the Hierophant, but that's a major. Anyway, two tens and two fives, which this is like the achievement, the final outcome, the fullest potential of reaching the goal. And this is like halfway. Okay. So halfway is like the turning point. Like I could go this way or this way. It's still in development. So I feel like you're wrapping something up from 2017 here. You get some sort of new energy coming in for you in May. Then you're working through that process. You're at a turning point here and here. And it looks like you're going to step up and be the responsible person. Do what you need to do. Okay. So uh, this is very general, uh, but I like seeing how the flow of energy sort of works. You do have a lot of majors. You have one, two, three, four, five majors. 
no court cards in the spread, but you do have a court card here. Three cups, two pentacles, two swords, no wands. Ah, oh, that's interesting. No wands is interesting. So no wands for you, Capricorn. It looks like instead of interacting with wand energy, you're sort of embodying wand energy. It's the ability to manifest and the ability to create without really putting a lot of thought into it. It's sort of second nature. Being the master of your own reality. This is you. But it also could be saying that you're finding like a lack of inspiration from just the people around you and being that leadership role is something that sort of comes natural to a lot of Capricorn people. Okay, so I was shuffling these because I wanted to draw a color card. I thought it would be fun to do sort of give the color energy for the year. This card came up for somebody else and I don't remember what other sign it came up for. I think it was Scorpio. So it was Scorpio. So, so I had mentioned before that sapphires actually represent Saturn. So sapphire color to me is also associated with Saturn. Saturn is your ruling planet. Okay, it's about lasting things. It's about um, long-term goals being achieved, the hard work that you put in to get there, being self-willed, self-disciplined, self having a structure. Um, also rules organizations, groups, organizations, businesses, a, a realm and a sphere that you work really well in. You are a very patient sign. Um, an earth sign. Earth tends to move slowly. Saturn is also the slowest uh, moving planet that we can see with our eyes. So there's like patience for how things unfold and patience with your own progress and other people's progress. That's why I was saying sort of like if somebody in a relationship or in a partnership or friendship disappoints you, um, it's, you know, going, okay, let's see what we can actually work with this. Being patient for other people's process. Okay, so I don't have these memorized. I'm going to go ahead and read from the book. It's a short little excerpt on this card. Um, so Sapphire heals, purifies, and regenerates your body. It also has the ability to soothe your mind, calm your nerves, and release emotional pain. As a nourishing color, Sapphire dissolves disharmony and clears the blocked pathway to well-being clearing your mind, balancing your emotions, and creating order in your life. Experiment with sapphire light to regenerate your body and bring back a sense of harmony. Breathe in healing sapphire light and allow yourself to focus on increasing your well-being. Rub your hands together, then place them next to each other. Imagine that in each palm you are holding a sphere of sapphire energy. Allow yourself to feel these powerful spheres of energy and play with them, increasing their size and strength. Now put your hands on the part of your body that needs regeneration. Say, divine light, heal, purify, and regenerate. Repeat this statement several times for about two minutes until you feel better. Visualize the sapphire energy moving through your body, cleansing it, regenerating it, and bringing it back to a sense of harmony. So I want to also draw from the medicine cards deck to see the animal totem guide, animal spirit guide for you for this year. I like that we were, have the animal theme for the year of the dog, so I wanted to sort of follow in line with that. Okay, so rabbit. Rabbit is your animal totem. Now, one of the things that rabbit does represent that I do know is fear. Another thing that Saturn gives us is fear. Because it's such a realistic planet, we all know we're gonna die. We all know our pets are gonna die, our loved ones are gonna die. You know, we all have this sort of looming truth of our destiny that this place is not permanent. And we distract ourselves with things so that we can function through life and not be crippled by this fact and crippled by this fear. The distractions is what we call with our relationships, our job, our money, our hopes, our interests, all of that. 
but there is some sort of this harsh reality that is sort of we all have to sort of face now if any sign is really connected to that harsh reality it is capricorn in some ways there is an imbalance that this sign can have where it goes from realistic to depression. So I do feel as though hope, you know, higher goals, higher ambitions are a better way to use that Saturn energy where it's like you're making a difference in this world. And so that it sort of eases that tension of fear, of impermanency, that we're all impermanent. If you leave something that's lasting, you're leaving your legacy, it made, it gave your life meaning in that sense. So this is what we're dealing with this year. Let's go ahead and read it. I, again, I don't have these memorized, so I'm going to read from the book, but this part is a little bit lengthy. So if you want to skip um, past it, I'm going to be um, drawing some more cards for the um, eclipse energies. But if you do want to listen to it, feel free. So it starts off with a, um, a poem. It says, scared little rabbit, please drop your fright. Running doesn't stop the pain or turn the dark to light. So a long time ago, no one really knows how long it was. Rabbit was a brave and fearless warrior. Rabbit was befriended by Eyewalker, a witch. The witch and rabbit spent much time together sharing and talking. The two were very close. One day, Eyewalker and Rabbit were walking along and they sat down on a trail to rest. Rabbit said, I'm thirsty. Eyewalker pick up, picked up a leaf, blew on it, and then handed Rabbit a gourd of water. Rabbit drank the water but didn't say anything. Then Rabbit said, I'm hungry. Eyewalker picked up a stone and blew on it and changed it to a turnip. She gave the turnip to Rabbit to eat. Rabbit tasted it and then ate the turnip with relish, but still Rabbit didn't say anything. The two continued along down the trail, which led to the mountains. Near the top, Rabbit tripped and fell and rolled almost to the bottom. Rabbit was in a very sad condition when Eyewalker got to him. She used a magic salve on Rabbit to heal his great pain and mend his broken bones. Rabbit still didn't say anything. Several days later, Eyewalker went searching for her friend. She searched high and low, but Rabbit was nowhere to be found. Finally, Eyewalker gave up. She met Rabbit quite by accident one day. Rabbit, why are you hiding and avoiding me? The witch asked. Because I'm afraid of you. I'm afraid of magic, answered Rabbit, cowering. Leave me alone. I see, said Eyewalker. I have used my magical powers on your behalf, and now you turn on me and refuse my friendship. I want nothing more to do with you or your powers, Robert, Rabbit countered. Rabbit did not even see the tears his words were bringing to Eyewalker's eyes. I hope we never meet and that I never see you again, Rabbit continued. Rabbit, Eyewalker said, we were once great friends and companions, but no more. It is within my power to destroy you, but because of the past and the medicines we have shared together, I will not do this. But from this day forward, I lay a curse on you and your tribe. From now on, I will call your fears. For now, from now on, you will call your fears and your fears will come to you. Be on your way for sweet medicines that bound us together as friends are broken. Now, Rabbit is the fear caller. He goes out and shouts, Eagle, I am so afraid of you. If the eagle doesn't hear him, Rabbit calls louder. Eagle, stay away from me. Eagle, now hearing Rabbit, comes and eats him. Rabbit calls bobcats, wolves, coyotes, and even snakes until they come. As this story shows, rabbit medicine people are so afraid of tragedy, illness, disaster, and being taken that they call those very fears to them to teach them lessons. The keynote here is what you resist will persist. If you fear most, if what you fear most is what you, what you fear most is what you will become. Here is the lesson. If you pulled rabbit, stop talking about horrible things happening and get rid of what if in your vocabulary. This card may sig signal a time of worry about your future or of trying to exercise your control over that which is not yet in form. Write your fears down and be willing to feel them. 
breathe into them and feel them running through your body into Mother Earth as giveaway. Okay, so one of the things, I'm glad I read this story. Um, one of the things that I'm seeing as far as like calling in adversaries, I see that here. It feels like you're on like a progress um, and moving forward. And then something sort of comes in um, unexpected and it, it's a different flow of energy that's quite opposite from the energy that you were that you were going in. I do see an adversary, someone coming in, like some enemy, not necessarily to be malicious, but just not working together, working against you. Now, it's possible that Rabbit is saying, you know, your fears um, could have called them in. But on the one hand, the thing that I did get at the very beginning of this um, story with Rabbit is that this person, this friend, had helped Rabbit so many times, used her powers for good, and each time somebody had, this person had done something nice for him, he didn't say anything. There wasn't any gratitude expressed. So I feel like there is a lesson in that in order to like remedy this energy that I'm seeing coming like at the end of summer here or midsummer to be more grateful. Not saying that you're not already grateful for the things you have, but to actually verbalize them, get it out, share with others how grateful you are. Not just think them in your mind and go, oh, I'm grateful, but actually share that with other people, express that. So that could be a remedy. And even a remedy like in the moment where you guys are clashing, if that comes up this year, Finding something to be grateful about that experience. Okay. Or something grateful that you appreciate about them it may sort of diffuse any defensiveness or any one-upmanship. Okay, so I'm pulling a card now that we have an idea of what the year will look like for your sign Capricorn. Let's face the uh, focus on the energy of the eclipses. So I'm going to be drawing two cards. The first one is for the lunar eclipse that just passed. One is for the solar eclipse that we had just had two days ago. And energy may still be lingering here. Okay, well, there you have it. So it's not just something that happens in the future down the line, but I, my energy was being drawn to that month because that was the main energy that I was feeling as being sort of like a turning point for you. Um, so this energy could have art just sort of could already be there. Okay, the hermit contemplating intro introspection, contemplating how are you going to handle this? There's wisdom in this. There's wisdom to be learned. There's a lesson. Okay, so what you're bringing in to to March. I always see the Knight of Swords as like right fighting, right, fighting for a cause of what's right and wrong, fighting for truth. Um, on the other sense, on the extreme sense, it could be sort of insisting people see things your way. That's the negative sense. Or it could be just like fighting, like beating a dead horse, fighting a battle that's not yours. And what else am I getting? It has a very determined, it's very forceful, forcefully opinionated. That's, that's, opinions to me are swords. It's logic. Yes, you can back it up with logic. You can make a case for anything, but it, it's the, uh, it's the delivery. It's the approach of being so forceful. In some cases that's necessary, not always. So it's like sort of using the wisdom to say, is this the necessary time for me to use this energy? I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So I want to end your reading. I want to cap off your reading with a message from the Lover's Oracle deck. Um, just as a nice, concise message here for you. 
Love changes everything. Days are longer, words mean more, joy is more intense, pain is deeper. Love can turn your world around and that world will last forever. Okay, Capricorn. So this was your reading for the eclipse energies and also for the year of the dog. I hope this was helpful and entertaining for you to watch. Uh, if you liked this video, leave a like. If you like the content of my channel, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you in the upcoming videos. Take care and be well.